Hey everybody, Madrybred here. As I'm sure you've noticed from the title, uh, I got the Twitch partnership. I got it uh, very, very shortly after yesterday's stream. I got the email in saying that I've been invited to the partner program, which is fucking awesome. Uh, I let you guys all know on Twitter and on Discord and on all that stuff yesterday, but I was so tired and so busy with other stuff, I didn't get to make a vlog yesterday, so I'm making that vlog today to let all of you know on YouTube. It was a really long journey to do. Uh, I ended up trying to crunch all the numbers and figuring out how much work it was. It ended up being uh, 39 days of focusing on almost entirely just the streaming. I did some YouTube stuff a little bit, but mostly just the streaming. Uh, across that time was 24 different streams and 64 and a half hours total uh, streamed if you don't count pre-streams and breaks. If you're counting pre-streams and breaks, then it's more like 76 hours, which is a really, really long time to go live. Especially for someone like me, where I get really, really tired from social interactions that prolong for a really long time, so... That was, uh, that was a shitload of work. That is easily the hardest I've ever worked on streaming in my many, many, many years of streaming. So, um, I'm happy that it paid off. Thank you again so much, everybody. I got the partnership because my average view count was high enough, and that's you guys deciding to come in and have you, and show your support and tweeting out the streams and putting on Facebook and Discord and all that stuff and really bringing people in. It's what got me the partnership, so thank you so much, everybody, for that. Um, so I, I guess I, I'm going to try and preempt some of the questions I'm going to get and give you some answers, but if you guys have any questions that don't get answered in this video, let me know in the comment section and I'll reply to you and just let you know the answer, because I'm sure there's going to be shitloads of questions. First questions I'm probably going to get, uh, people always ask about, like, what does partnership do exactly, and I went over it in a bunch of other vlogs. Uh, but the quick version, the stuff that would be most important to you guys would probably be one, I will always have transcoding options now, which is the quality options on my stream. You know how sometimes when you go to a stream it just says like, uh, source, and then sometimes it's got source but it also has lower quality options as well. I will always have the option of lower quality options now which means it doesn't really matter if you're on bad Wi-Fi or you have bad internet or something, you can probably find a quality option that works, which is really nice twofold. Uh, that actually helps everybody who watches my stream, because even if you have really good internet and you were watching my stream at the highest quality before, now that I know that I can stream at any quality and it's not going to keep people from watching because they can always lower the quality, I'm just gonna stream in a way higher quality. So before I streamed in uh, 3,500 kilobit per second, now I'm doing 6,000, which seems to be the max that Twitch allows, but I'm gonna work with, I'm gonna workshop that a little bit and like try to see if I can get in contact with some staff members about that, because I think the article where they listed that might have actually been out of date. I think it might go higher now. If you don't know what bitrate is, um, have you ever been watching a stream or a YouTube video or something? And when there was a lot of motion on screen, things got really pixelated, uh, especially in dark areas where it's uh, black or gray or like a muddy brown. The colors can kind of get washed out. The uh, it gets really pixelated and you especially notice it when there's a lot of movement. That means that the video feed you're seeing doesn't have a high enough bitrate for what it's trying to display, so it's not all updating fast enough as whatever's moving moves. Um, this is especially a problem in any kind of action game in which the whole camera moves anytime your character moves, because then it needs to refresh the entire screen because the whole camera is changing orientation. You know, think of a game like Hearthstone. Large portions of the screen, nothing visually is changing on unless you, like, mouse your cursor over it and click something. And so naturally, you don't need as high of a bitrate for that, whereas, let's say, uh, Don't Starve, every time you walk, the entire screen moves, and so it's got to refresh the entire screen anytime there's any movement there. So you'd want a higher bitrate, especially because it's a bit of a dark game, although it's not the most graphically intensive thing in the world, so it itself might not be the best example for needing a higher bitrate. Hitman would be a really good example. There's a lot of darkness, uh, it's a really high fidelity game, it's a very modern looking new game. Monster Hunter World, that's another good example of one that would need a big bitrate. If you watch some of my clips uh, specifically on Twitch of Monster Hunter, 
Uh, there are definitely times when the bitrate gets very pixelated and weird looking, whereas on the YouTube version it doesn't because I locally record that in a much higher quality. Well, I've already set it knobs, so I've, I've got it all set up in my streaming software and everything. I am going to be doing my next stream in double the quality from before, and we're gonna we're gonna test run that and see how that works. And as far as I can tell, it should be perfectly fine because I streamed like double that quality even way back when I was on Hitbox and Smashcast. So I know my computer and my internet can handle it. So let's just make sure that. Uh, Twitch is fine with that. Another thing that being a partner gives you is uh, if you're subscribed on my Twitch page, you used to just get like one emote because if I was an affiliate and affiliates only get one emote, which is really lame. Um, well, one per tier. There's also the $10 tier and the $25 tier, which I put more emotes on because I was allowed to. It was the only way to get more emotes. Uh, now that I'm a partner, I'm not allowed. I'm, I'm currently with my current subscriber count because how many emotes you can have is based on your subscriber count on Twitch, um, I'm allowed to have nine emotes. So what I did was I deleted my $25 tier and my $10 tier, moved those emotes to the $1 tier, and uh, added a bunch of new ones. So we have, I think it's seven emotes on it. Well, right now we have six on it. They just approved five last night, and then there's another one that Metalizer came up with this morning, uh, sent it my way on Discord. I turned it into the proper sizes for the emotes and whatnot gave it the transparent background, and I put that one in, so that one's in the process of getting approved, but I have no idea whatsoever why it would get denied, so I don't think it's gonna get denied. It's just pictures of my face with big wacky expressions and stuff. Um, same ones that you always see on the Discord and everything. So those are available to you guys now, which is really nice. Um, you only need to pay $5 to get all my pictures of my dumb, stupid face. And, uh, oh, what else? Well, this one's probably less interesting to you. Uh, this one more so just impacts me, although I guess the money goes back into the show, is, um, you know how whenever you watch a stream, you get, like, an, a giant advert before the stream, or if you raid somebody, then you usually get an advert as you raid them? Um, I actually get paid for the advertisements on my Twitch now that I'm a partner. Um, don't know why affiliates don't, uh, I'm, it's weird to me, but... I, I wasn't even aware before I wasn't getting paid for that. It's just, you know, advertisements on Twitch, unless you're really big, tend to be basically nothing. Uh, but now I get paid for that, so that's something. I'm allowed to run ad breaks if I want. I probably won't. Maybe I'll run like a 30 second ad break when I go on a five minute break or something. I don't know. I think those are the only partner things that are coming to mind that probably would be of any interest to you. Um, Apparently, I can check off a thing that makes it so that there's a link to buy every game I play on my stream, and if you buy through that, I get a commission, which is really cool. It's kind of like what I do with um, with Chrono.gg, where it's a daily game sale, and I get a small commission off of it, or my affiliate link for Humble Bundle, where you can pick to have some of the money go to me. Um, both of those are in the description of all my videos, by the way. However, uh, I can't check that off right now. Uh, maybe I can today. I, I guess I haven't tried today. I'll, I'll try right now while I explain. Uh, but there was some kind of weird little bug in the browser where it just doesn't let me accept the terms and conditions, which I already read through them, and they're fine. It's a short read, actually. It's called Game Sales via Twitch. I want to opt into that. And, like, I, I even scroll down to the bottom of the EULA, because I actually read it. It's quite short. And, uh, yeah, the accept button is just grayed out. I tried on different browsers to see if there's, like, a checkbox that's not showing up, but nothing. So I'm just gonna give it a few days, and if it's still not working, then I'll, uh, I'll see if I can put in, like, a support ticket with the staff to look into that. Because I figure you guys would probably find that helpful. I mean, it's a good way to support the show. It doesn't cost you anything extra, either than buying a game that you were already going to buy, you know. If you're watching it on the stream and you feel like buying it, then instead of going straight to their website or to Steam or whatever, you can click my link and I get a commission or however it ends up being. I don't know 100% how it works yet. Also, uh, the you know there's like loyalty badges for how long you've been subscribed on Twitch? Um, we've always had a base one, a three month one, and a six month one. The next tier ranking is one year and I didn't have one. So I was kind of thinking like, what the fuck am I gonna do for when, when someone finally has been subscribed for a year, because it's nine months now since I came back to Twitch, and so I have people who have been subscribed for nine months, that, nine or ten months, actually, it might be ten. But I came up with one, I don't know how I didn't think of it earlier. A great cropped-out picture of smug-looking man bar. There you go. 
I think you'll probably like that. Other questions you might have. Oh, you uh, write the schedule. You're probably wondering what the streaming schedule is going to be now that we don't need to worry about the view count. Ah, that's probably another question you have. A lot of people have been asking this one and I try to answer it in like so many of the vlogs and everything. But again, it's, it's just impossible to get messages out to everybody who wants to know because, you know, you know how YouTube notifications are. I'm sure every YouTuber you've ever seen in your life has already told you by now, YouTube notifications are frustrating. A lot of people have asked, do I need to keep the average monthly view count above 75 to keep my partnership? No, I don't. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, you, you can't just lose your partnership like that. You have to like break terms and conditions. And basically you lose your partnership if you get your account perma banned. That's like the only time I've ever seen somebody lose their partnership. My average monthly could go down to like a viewer and I don't lose the partnership. Now, I have no reason to believe it's going to go down to a viewer. I'm sure it's going to take a bit of a dip. Uh, we're probably going to have like a shitload of people just saying like congratulations on partnership on the next stream. And then, you know, it'll take a big of a, di a bit of a dip as uh, as people relax and don't worry so much about the view count, which is perfectly fine. If anything, I'm really happy and feeling a lot more relaxed that I don't have to stress out about the view count. It's gonna be so nice to just stream. If I wanna do a random 2 a.m. stream, even though I know not many people are gonna be watching, I can just do it. There's no penalty to that anymore. You know, I don't have this arbitrary penalty of it bringing down an average. The average doesn't matter anymore. The average is just there for me to look at and say, oh, did I do better or worse this month, you know? Uh, which isn't that big a deal to me. If I want to do a random stream, I can just not count that one. It was a bonus, you know? But the schedule, uh, let's put it on screen. So this is the schedule for this week. I've modified it a little bit. So you can see the Saturday RimWorld stream, I moved to tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, the reason I did that was because um, now that I don't need to worry about the view count as much for that, I don't need that to be on a weekend to like maximize the views. And also my Saturday was gonna be crazy fucking busy anyway. Uh, that's the day that my mom's coming by to pick up her cats again. She left uh, the cats with me and Fatima for 15 days, or it's going to be 15 days, so I could take care of them while she was out of town. On top of that, it's like the only day that What a Geek and I are both free to do more Deadly Premonition, and we need to get three episodes of that done, and then I need to edit them uh, so that they can like, because I do my weekly uploads on Sunday. I schedule all my uploads on Sunday, so I'd need to get them edited that night and rendered out. So I would need to have my mom over, hang out with her for a bit, uh, pack up all of her stuff and the cats in her car, uh, record three uh, half an hour long videos with What a Geek, and then edit all of them so they can render out overnight and do a minimum two and a half hour live stream in one day. That would have just been way too fucking much. So we're moving that live stream to Thursday. Um, there is a real chance it might be the RimWorld uh, episode where we either beat the game or die trying. Um, we need to power up the spaceship, which we have all the stuff to make right now, I believe. Uh, if not, we're it's so obscenely wealthy right now that we could easily buy whatever supplies are missing. The only thing that we never really get a chance to buy that we had a low amount of was uranium, but we actually have a lot of uranium now. I probably just want to crank up power generation and use the spare uranium for a whole bunch of turrets uh, so that we can keep all of those turrets powered with the new power generation and hope that helps carry us through. Probably also gonna make a big bill on the machining table for a bunch of assault rifles. They're easier to make than before, although we're pretty low on steel. I hope a good bulk, uh, if a bulk good trader comes by soon, we can do that. And we also have four different alliances from different tribes and colonies we can call in to help us out in the 15 days of pain when we power up that, uh, when we power up the, the spaceship. Sunday, we're bringing back Crusader Kings to Sundays. Holy Fury just came out, and that does mean our old save file is broken, which is a shame that the mecha playthrough has to be over, but I am making one more episode of it. I'm making one locally recorded episode of the Crusader Kings 2 playthrough, uh, where I basically just show you the broken file, and at least we have some closure and have some fun looking at how badly the DLC fucked up the old save file. Like, there's counties all over the world that are unoccupied and, like, glitched out. So we'll have a fun little episode looking at that. I've already picked what country I want to play as in the new playthrough. We're going to be Bohemia at the earliest start. Um, they are a Slavic pagan tribal nation 
right on the border of both the Catholic world, the Orthodox world, as well as just across the water from the Muslim world and the Coptic Christian world. So basically, there's a lot of potential for Holy Wars, there's potential for land raiding. It's not a Viking playthrough like I'm sure you've all seen a billion times because everyone plays Viking. I'm instead of playing landlocked um, checks, basically. And uh, our first goal, we're only one county by default off of making the Kingdom of Bohemia. So that would be our early goal. And um, eventually we get to decide if we're going to be doing a, a merchant republic or a, uh, a feudal society. Ugh, God, it's just, it's going to be fun. There's going to be such a variety of things we can do on top of what we used to do before. So I think... I think that'd be perfect. It'd be a really big change of pace. A whole new area, a whole new government type and religion and play style and a new DLC and a new patch. There's gonna be a lot to really freshen it up. A lot of people have also been asking about the Animal Kingdom stuff and that shit is hilarious. I definitely want to play that soon because what I've seen, it looks amazing. Um, Maybe I'll do some like goofy videos of that sometime or something. I don't know. Well, we'll see how that goes. And um, as usual, uh, or as was usual before I tried getting the partnership and now I have it so I can go back to this again. All these days that are blank for streams, there just might be a stream. Uh, if I just randomly feel like streaming whatever game, I'm just gonna stream it. And I'll let you know that I'm streaming with a YouTube video, with a tweet with a Discord message that will be at message to you to ping you. If you go to the schedule section of my Discord and you opt in to get those notifications, there'll be a bot message in there that just says reply with this emote and we'll ping you every time there's a stream. Um, as well as the Steam group. If you join the Steam group linked in the description, uh, I will send you a little message thing on that letting you know when I stream, so maybe I'll stream at 2 a.m. I don't know, um, but whatever old game I feel like streaming, I. I just got into playing Daggerfall and Morrowind, and I, I modded them so that they, um, just so that they run in like modern resolutions. By there and that, it's very vanilla, um, and I've changed the controls to make it easier to play. Uh, I've remapped, actually in, in Morrowind the controls are fine. In Daggerfall, I remap the controls pretty heavily, but I feel like everybody does. It's like in-game uh, remapping. Uh, you can actually make it run really, really well without even using mods. It runs surprisingly well just with like DOS box. I use it through GOG. It's pretty incredible though. Um, I really enjoy both of those already. Now that I'm finally giving them a proper chance, because I had never given Morrowind like a proper, proper chance before. And now that I've played like a couple hours, it's feeling pretty good. I like it. Uh, the, the movement speed is abysmally slow, but I've heard that told to me for so many years that I'm just like, all right, I can I can suffer through it. I can get my speed stat up. I can get spells to help with this. You know, I can I can suffer through the abysmal walk speed. And in Daggerfall, man, Daggerfall was fucking ahead of its time. Just navigating towns and stuff, like pulling out my map and everything, having to talk to town folks for directions. Um, it sounds like it's a pain in the ass, but it's actually really cool where they, it's like semi-random generated and it feels like you're in a city, like more than any other Elder Scrolls game ever made. Fucking Daggerfall from 1996. You are in cities when you go in a city in that game. There are hundreds of buildings. Every citizen has a house. Like. It's, it's actually really cool. Like, that sounds like a stupid eccentricity that wouldn't end up being that interesting. It's actually pretty interesting. Um, where, where I last saved in that, actually, I was just, like, practicing a little bit. And uh, I, was, I was about to make my own spell, my own custom spells at the, uh, at the Mages Guild. So I was just, like, researching through it and, like, okay, what do I need? Like, I probably want, like, a general buff spell that gives me a lot of resistances and... You know, I need to get like a teleport spell because navigation can be a bit of a bitch. Like, oh man, it's just, it's really cool. So I think I want to stream some Daggerfall for you guys. And maybe after I beat Daggerfall, I'll do Morrowind or maybe the other way around or something like that. It'll probably be a long time to beat Daggerfall. And I don't know how soon I want to do that. Um, I want to stream through Diablo 1 because I actually don't think I ever beat Diablo 1 as a kid. I got close, but I don't think I ever beat it. So I want to stream through Diablo 1 as the wizard, the mage, I forget what the class is called, the main magic user. And I'm going to be using the Beelzebub version, which is a fan mod that makes it run on modern resolutions, which is very cool. Um, 
I'll have to lower the resolution in it a little bit, just because it will be illegible not only to you, but to me if I have it at full resolution, because the only problem of the Beelzebub mod, uh, it scales the game really beautiful, it looks really good. However, as far as I can tell, there's no user interface scaling, which is fucking brutal. I can't think of any other questions that you guys might ask, but I'm sure you're gonna be asking a lot of them. Again, let me know any questions you have in the comment section. I'll reply and try to let you know the answer if I know the answer or if I could look into the answer. My throat is actually getting really sore, probably from the insane amount of streaming I've been doing recently, so I think I'm just gonna give my throat a rest for the rest of the day. Uh, I'm gonna go make some breakfast because it's 1.20 in the afternoon and I haven't gotten around to making myself anything to eat yet. I've just, it's been such a whirlwind of replying to tweets and, and comments and, and emails and Discord messages and, and all this stuff. Holy shit. It's, it's been pretty awesome though. Um, when I was turning 26 this year in September, I made three goals to reach before I was 27. Uh, the first is to get 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, which would be doubling my subscriber count in one year. Probably not gonna happen, uh, but we'll see if I can pull that off. Um, the second goal was to get my body fat percentage to 12% or lower. I started uh, at 17% and now I'm at 14.5%. In fact, I lost almost all that weight in like a month, month and a half. I've just been stagnant during this whole streaming run because, uh, b believe it or not, it is quite stressful. Uh, and the last one was to become a Twitch partner. So I became a Twitch partner way faster than I thought I would. It's less than a quarter way into um, when, well, my next birthday. It's less than a quarter of the way towards my next birthday. And I already met one of the three goals. Um, I'm really proud of that. The next goal that I'm going to put all my work into is the body fat percentage one. Um, I think I could do that one pretty, pretty reasonably. I can definitely do that before the halfway point. And then the last one I'm going to do is the 100,000 subscriber one. The 100,000 subscriber one, I'm probably not going to pull that off. I'm not going to dilute myself into thinking that I can double my subscriber count that I gathered over eight years in just one year. But my subscriber growth has gone up quite a bit. Uh, since, since I set that goal, just through these tips videos and everything, and just through working really hard. Um, my, my average view count of my normal videos isn't doing very well, but my view count on my big videos, my tutorials and my tips, they're doing awesome. So I can't really complain too much, you know? I don't think I'm gonna be, gonna be able to get that final goal, but I sure as hell am I gonna try, and I sure as hell am I gonna get more subscribers over the course of that year, by the time I'm 27, than I did the previous. It's it's gonna be awesome. If I get even 10,000 subscribers in over the course of that year, from 20 from uh, when I was 26 to when I'm 27, um, then that's a few thousand better than the previous year. I, I believe I got uh, 7,000 subscribers going from 25 to 26. So if I can get at least 15,000, 10,000 ish, I'm happy but I'm totally shooting for the goal of getting 50,000 more. That would be fucking crazy. That would mean I get verified on both Twitch and YouTube in the same year, because you get verified on, or at least you can send in your application to get verified on YouTube when you hit 100,000 subscribers. And I've never heard of a case of them rejecting under the new system where there's that hard requirement of 100,000 subscribers. I've never heard of someone being rejected for that. I just know a lot of people who um, have 100,000 subscribers and don't know that they can apply to be verified. And by the way, if anyone watching this has 100,000 subscribers and not verified, go apply to get verified because it's really good for self-promotion to be verified. The check mark instantly says you're a big YouTuber and people get curious and they want to see. So if I, can, if I can get on that, guys. Anyway, I've rambled long enough. Thank you again so fucking much, everybody, for helping out with getting this Twitch partnership. It really means a lot to me after all these years of, of uh, streaming to finally see proper success. And with how unstable YouTube has been for the last forever, and just knowing like there's people's channels who just get 
nuked due to algorithm changes or unintentional side effects of things or ridiculous things being taken out of context. Just knowing that I have my eggs in more baskets than just YouTube now that I have this Twitch partnership and that if worst comes to worst, I have another platform. And even just that, I can put a bit less of my focus right now on YouTube. If I'm doing like 30% Twitch, 70% YouTube right now, I wouldn't mind making that a bit more 50-50. I feel like Twitch is a more reliable platform right now. I definitely have problems with how Twitch is run, but I have less problems with it than I do YouTube. And I think it's a great service. I think they're both great services. I'd, I really want to spread out the eggs into more baskets, if that makes sense. It's also why I launched that merch store that YouTube was yelling at me to launch. I mean, I've had like a Spreadshirt store forever, but all my merch sucks. <laughs> so it's, it's just stupid designs I threw together really quick. And a bit of fan art, which I really appreciate from people who told me like, hey, just use this. Uh, but I still didn't do a very good job on the t-shirt designs, and that's on me. Um, but Teespring has a thing with YouTube now, and YouTube was yelling at me to make a Teespring store, so I did. Uh, apparently it gets promoted below my videos, but I've never seen it. Apparently it only happens in certain countries, and one of the countries isn't Canada, and so that's why I can't see it, so I don't even know if it works. Anyone watching this who's in America, can you see it below my videos somewhere? Like, it promoting my merch? Should be promoting, like, a shirt and some mugs and some phone cases. I th I'll have the link in the description if you're curious. Right now, I have a shirt, two mugs, and two phone cases. Um, one phone case kind is, like, there, there's the iPhone ones, and then there's the Samsung ones. Those are the two categories. Uh, that I was allowed to make for phone cases. And apparently it's got like many subcategories of for different styles of phone, like i4, i5, i6, s, s whatever. I don't like iPhones. So there's that. Um, I put the price of them really fucking low. Um, the t-shirt is a little bit more expensive than I'd like it to be, but it's because I said it to be a premium quality one rather than a standard quality. Because who the hell, like, at least if you're gonna wear a shirt with, like, my dumb show shit on it, you should at least be comfortable. Uh, but I was allowed to set the price of them and, like, how much profit I get. Um, by default, everything wanted a $10 profit. Uh, I just set them to a $1 profit on everything. Because also, if you're going to wear things with my dumb show memes on it, then I at least want it to be cheap. So, uh, the prices there are literally $1 above production cost. Um, or at least $1 above what I'm allowed to. I'm sure it's not exactly production cost. I'm sure phone cases cost, like, a fucking buck to produce at most. But yet they sell for, like, $13 or something. I don't even know if that's Canadian or American prices. Sorry. Uh, you might have to check manually. Um, but I'm sure that costs, like, nothing, but... 13 bucks, I think, is what I put it at Canadian, something like that. I put it at whatever was $1 above not making money. Um, so maybe you're interested in that stuff. That's another way to diversify my income. There's that. There's Patreon. There's Now there's a join button on YouTube, which is basically shit Patreon. Um, it's where I can give you not as many rewards as on Patreon, because it's laid out really poorly. And... YouTube just got rid of their messaging system, so I have no way of contacting people to give them their rewards. So there's a section on every single uh, reward tier that just says how you can get in contact with me so that I can give you your reward. And the answer to that is basically hit me up on like Discord or Twitter or something so I can give you your reward. I think Texas Boots is the only guy who is uh, who hit the join button on that. But he also just did it on Patreon, so I just messaged him for all the stuff on Patreon, because it's easier. But you, you haven't gotten back to me, Texas Boots. I don't know if you watch these vlogs. If you're watching these vlogs this long into the fucking Royal Ramble, then uh, just uh, check your Discord messages and, and hit me up. Um, I think I've rambled enough. I'm gonna go make my breakfast. God, I didn't sleep enough last night. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.